Oh, it's freezing again. Oh, you guys are so awesome. Clips, no clips. Right, this is a, re well, I don't think it's gonna be that short, but it was meant to be a really short video. Uh, this is where we were at last time, and I was just going to try and cast these in aluminium. Well, holy, I had no idea how uh, well that video would have gone down. Uh, for my channel, that video is, uh, it's, it seems to have really piqued everyone's interest, and I'm so grateful. You guys have been so supportive in your comments. All the suggestions were brilliant, some were hilarious. Um, intentionally or not, I'm not sure. But uh, everything was very gratefully received. And some of you even went uh, above and beyond and emailed me uh, sort of mini little essays. They were brilliant. And some even went further with uh, sending diagrams and things. So thank you so much. That's what this video is about mainly, to say thank you. You guys are awesome. Um, but it's all changed. Clips, rubbish. No clips. So this is the latest iteration. This is now Modular Flasks 2.0. This is incredible. I'll go into it in a bit more detail in a sec. And this is all due to your help. Um, also, now I know the modular thing will happen. All that's left to do now is design a shape that casts well and can be attached well at the corners. So the first hurdle is done. But just to show you, I've reduced the height a little. It was 120 millimeters and now it's 80 millimeters. So that's actually kind of similar to uh, what a lot of people use uh, in their flasks now, uh, a kind of small flask. And that also makes a big difference in terms of uh, updates and printing time. I think I need to keep it small so that I can do really quick updates like this. This whole thing was printed in 24 hours and I have been desperate to tell you about it. Literally ever since my video went up, you guys have been streaming me with uh, suggestions and more questions and uh, support. It's been really brilliant. I, I, it's tickled me pink that you guys are so into this and I'm really into this. And now that this has happened, this is a thing. So the other one, uh, I mean, it was good. I was pleased with it, um, but I'm, I'm a very pragmatic person. If someone comes along with a better idea, I'm more than happy. I guess it's my scientific training. I used to be a scientist in my old life. And uh, if someone comes up with a better idea, well, that, you know, it's a better idea. You've got to admit it. So that's gone. You guys, actually several of you came up with the same groundbreaking idea that changed this whole thing. I will put your names, if I can find you, I'll put your names up on the screen now. But one of you, the guy that contacted me first, needs a very special mention, and that is Paul Reed. Now, he changed everything. Not only did he come up with this idea first, uh, obviously he didn't, I don't think he invented the idea, but he told me about the idea first. And not only that, he emailed me, uh, because I was slightly confused in the comments, and uh, I knew he was onto something. So I, I'm gonna take credit for knowing he was onto something. But uh, the idea came from him. And when he sent me the diagram, wow, my mind was blown. Uh, I will go into it in a little bit more detail in a second, but this was just a little thank you section at the front of the video. And just to show you what, we, what we're ending up with here. So I've reduced the number of ribs. I've made it simpler. There are no more clips anymore. It is dead flat, like in all directions. It is perfectly smooth. I mean, this thing is incredible and it's completely modular and temporarily fixed together. Um, if this casts well, you know, this could be it. I mean, we're, it's that, it's that, I'm so, I'm so excited. Woo uh, so, that's where we're at. It's amazing. I've been printing like a madman. And I've run out of uh, PLA, so I've had to stop, and it's actually given me a chance to chat to you guys. Yeah, that's it. Would you like to know the groundbreaking secret that has changed everything? 
I had like a little script to uh, tell you and you know do it all in order and everything but as per usual I got too excited so I'm just going to put this bit at the front of the video and I think it's time for voiceover man. Hello lovely people voiceover man here okay so I really yapped on too much just then so I'm going to try and keep this really short or at least as short as possible. I just want to say it again though you guys are awesome. The modular flask is definitely going to be a thing now. There's a card on screen if you want to go and see part one where I first discussed the idea of modular flasks, or at least the patterns for modular flasks. And if you want an overview of the idea and get the order of things, it's all on the part one video, so go check it out. So after the first video, I had a lot of suggestions, and I've tried to take on board the ones I thought were the most suitable for a general purpose, easy to print, and importantly, easy to cast flask design. There were some suggestions that were, while great, very specific to a certain need, and I'm trying to keep this first version at least as simple as possible. A popular suggestion was to have pins or hinges at three corners and a clasp of some sort on the fourth so that the flask could wrap and unwrap around the sand. Now I think this would be incredible but I think it might be a little over ambitious for this first go. I think we need to keep it as simple as possible to start with at least to maximize our chances of success. Also perhaps I didn't make it clear in part one that this modular flask idea is only to be used as a pattern for making metal flasks using simple sand casting, and then hopefully some simple operations to assemble it. I don't want to force anyone into more difficult or messy procedures, like having to use a lathe or a mill or do investment casting, for example. It'd be great if the flasks can be made and assembled by a guy or girl with a basic garage workshop. So Paul Reed really lit a fire under my butt with his comment on part one. And it's prompted this flurry of activity and this whole video really. So thank you again, Paul. I put a link to Paul's channel in the description. As a way of thanks, perhaps you could subscribe to him and say thanks in person. When Paul commented early on after the part one video went up, he mentioned tapered dovetails. And I was immediately intrigued. Dovetails are a beautiful thing and it just hadn't occurred to me to use them in this project. Now I've used dovetails before in a woodworking sense at school to join corners on a nice wooden pencil case. So I just assumed he meant for joining the corner pieces together, but that's not what he meant at all. And thank goodness he emailed me a diagram, this diagram. Now at first glance to some, it might not look like much, but the second I saw it, I realized this could change everything. I was so impressed. I immediately designed a couple of little test half width pieces to see if they joined together well. So here they are, my first few modules with the tapered dovetail. So you've got a dovetail on one side and a slot on the other. And That's it. And they are amazing. They go together so well and so flatly and perfectly. It's just incredible. As you can see, they fit together perfectly and very securely. And more importantly, they can be taken apart and put back together again too, without any loss of the sturdiness of it all. Immediately I realised if I can get all the modules to fit like this, then there was no need for my clips anymore. And that is great, as while the clips prompted the whole reusable idea, the tapered dovetails win in terms of strength and rigidity over the clips any day. So tapered dovetails are a definite improvement. So seeing as these initial test pieces worked out, I spent the next four hours completely redesigning the whole modular flask system to include the tapered dovetails. I also used the complete redesign as an opportunity to make the individual modular pieces a little bit more realistically sized. So this is now Modular Flasks 2.0. It's all based on a flask sand depth of 80 millimeters, not 120 like the first version. I also decided to 3D print everything at 0.2mm resolution this time, which is much quicker than before. It's the quickest print speed I can do while still having a decent degree of accuracy, so the print times for each module are way shorter now. 
So let's have a look at the new modular flask 2.0 subsections in more detail. So obviously it has the tapered dovetails now and no clips. The sand depth is now 80 millimeters and I based the module widths on a standard unit being 80 millimeters wide. So the handle section is now 80 millimeters wide and the extension section is 80 millimeters wide too. Then I added a smaller half width extension piece at 40 millimeters wide, which will give a lot more flexibility when it comes to getting a size you like. I've also made the corner modules have a larger footprint now. So that means they're a little longer too. A few people mentioned this and I think it's a good idea as it will mean 3D printing these corner pieces should be more forgiving and generally easier as the parts should stick to the print bed more securely. I've also added more grooves to the bases of the modules as the sand side of the modules. A few of you wanted positive ribs on the inside and that would be cool but it would mean that the 3D printing would be much more difficult as the whole module would have to be floating on a raft of support material and I'm really trying to avoid supports as they are fiddly at the best of times and clean up can be a total nightmare. But the good news for you guys that want positive ribs on the inside is I've made the indents or slots a nice triangular shape so that after you've 3D printed the modules you could totally glue in some extra 3D printed ribs. The slots would serve as a lovely gluing surface of a known dimension for ribs of whatever shape you want. I've also added a lot more slots so now you have a nice choice of where to put your positive ribs if you want them. I'm actually hoping that these indented slots or grooves will grip the sand well enough on their own, but who knows, I've never used a metal flask in my life, so now at least we have the option of internal ribs if we need them. A big change with this new tapered dovetail design is that the parts will now be chiral or handed, meaning they will have a left and a right side that's not swappable. We won't be able to rotate a module by 180 degrees with respect to the other modules now. This is due to each piece having to have a dovetail on one side and a slot on the other, but I don't see this as a problem as the modules can still be put together in any order, just not individually turned upside down now. Also, it does mean that when it comes to the corner modules, we need one corner with a dovetail and a completely different corner design that will have a slot which means an extra module type. But again, I don't see that as a problem as you still need to print at least two corners anyway. So the fact that they are slightly different shapes is no big deal. So I've only got these to play with at the moment. These two are my test pieces and they are actually identical. Um, I used the test piece as the basis for the whole new design, but I have rounded over all the sharp edges, uh, filleted all the sharp edges and indents on this one. Um, and I didn't want to do that because that would have taken extra design time. Also, the first prototypes didn't have the slots in the bottom. So I'm going to leave those out for now. So these are the only ones I have to play with today. I'm printing more. But as you can see with this new design, with the two corner types, one with the dovetail and one with the slot, you can actually make a, um, a flask this is the smallest size you can make a flask and that is an internal dimension of 16 centimeters because everything's based on 8 centimeters and 4 centimeters this is basically 8 plus 8 uh, so that's the smallest I can go but if I include all the rest Oh, you'll see how lovely and stiff they are. That goes on there. Some of these have literally just come off the printer, so they're a little bit tighter than the rest. That goes on there. Goes on there. That goes on there. See that one was a little bit loose. Probably because last night I printed, I printed a whole load with a raft uh, because I needed to do six pieces at once, and my print bed is giving me grief at the moment. So I've used a brim on mine, a raft. 
mainly because this little corner here, this area of my build plate, I always have a bit of difficulty just there. It must be a tiny bit low, so the brim sorts that out for me. It does mean I have to uh, remove it, which is a bit of a pain. And where I cut the raft off, I may have just nibbled into the piece, but I've already found that if it's a little, so like this one, it's not loose loose, but it's looser than the rest. But if you just pop one tiny piece of paper in the slot, like that, push it down a bit, there we go. And then you shut it, it's tight again. So you can always make up a little, you know, make up any problems with that. So, look at that. Isn't that amazing? That is so strong and also so flat. I am so chuffed with how good these tapered dovetails are. It has changed everything. I did toy with the idea of having just one corner piece design and that be the slotted version and then separately making a new double dovetail part to make the corner piece fit on a slotted end. But in the end, I decided that it's probably better just to have one flexible join per module. I think it will make putting them together and separating them again much easier. The joints are lovely and stiff as it is, and I think a double dovetail joint could introduce a little bit too much wiggle perhaps. And removing a double dovetail from a module might be very hard because it's small and it won't be easy to grip. So yeah, we now have five module types, and I think this could be the winning combination. I won't stop this now until we have a simple and flexible design that's easy to print and cast. Then all we have to do is the assembly and the pin mechanism. Also, I'll definitely be releasing a glue together version two at the end for those that want that option. Look at that, that's 56 centimeters. So that's where we're at. I know I've only just put up part one, but I'm so excited by the whole thing, I couldn't resist telling you all about the updates. So now I just need to print a few more extension modules, which will take a day or two, because I've run out of PLA. But once I've got a few extra bits printed, I'll get on with the test castings. It is so exciting. Fingers crossed it's not completely pants. Actually, I'm so chuffed with this tapered dovetail update it has really cemented the reusable modular aspect of everything. So I'm not that bothered if it doesn't cast that well on the first go. I can just keep updating the generic shape of the thing until it casts well. I thought part two would just be me casting the version one design, the one with the clips, but it's changed so much so quickly, I thought I'd do this not so quick update instead. We've still got a long way to go, but I'm certain we'll eventually get there now. Hooray! And lastly, I want to thank you all again for your awesome comments, ideas, general enthusiasm and support for the project. It has really blown me away. Thank you so much for helping out with this. You are all amazing. Bye. Oh, obviously, if you want to keep up to date with where this is going and whether it eventually works or it's complete failure, subscribe, hit that stupid bell. Bye. Please share the video, that makes a big difference. Give it a thumbs up. Bye.